Hello everyone, thank you for joining us on this edition of the 6pm primetime newscast on Ekinos Television. We are broadcasting from Cameroon's economic capital, Douala. I am Babla Jonathan. In our top stories in this edition of the news, Mombo, a locality in Banga Mungo Division, littoral region of the Republic of Cameroon, a locality that was abandoned by its inhabitants because of insecurity, overflowing of insecurity from neighboring southwest region of the Republic of Cameroon, one of the two English speaking regions of the country, hit by security and socio political tensions. For more than four years today, live has gradually uh, started returning to Mombo. We'll show you the picture of that locality in this newscast and in the northwest region we'll take a look at the challenges farmers are facing as a result of the unstable security situation in the two english-speaking regions of the country we'll also take a look at the state of roads in the town of limbe in the southwest region ahead of the 2021 african nations championship stay with us Live is gradually returning to Mombo, a locality in the Mongo Division, littoral region of the Republic of Cameroon. The village is said to have been uh, taken hostage by armed men who came in or was said to have been uh, coming in from the southwest region of the Republic of Cameroon, one of the two English-speaking regions of the country, hit by security tensions for more than four years. Today, now life is gradually returning to uh, Mombo, and some of the inhabitants are going back to the uh, village after relative peace and normalcy uh, began being established in that village by notably traditional authorities. Details in this report. Farm roads in Mombo, Bonkarie, village in Mbanga subdivision, Mongo division now busy again with farmers seen with crops. Freshly harvested bunch of plantains could also be seen on the way, ready to be sold. These are activities which have been missing in this village for over two years now due to the crisis affecting its neighboring villages like Muyuka, Ediki, Ikiliwindi and Tombel, all in the southwest region. The village was deserted due to the alleged attacks from armed men on farmlands and on farmers. Apart from the crisis, the village has been without a leader for over 10 years. But that is now a thing of the past with His Royal Highness Chief Njembele Mukwele Jean Celestin enthroned as the third class chief of Mombo, Bon Carie. The installation done by the paramount ruler of the Balong, His Royal Highness Chief Mukete Ngama Jelan, came at a time that land disputes is common. The new chief that are installed here, we are there, we have lived here, we have invested here so much. Once the new chief come down the We have been here for several years and invested too much. Our cry is for him to come and stop the land disputes in this village. If the village go look climb, we will run by land for him, he secure us so that we will live where our money with the people here. The chief is calling on his runaway natives to return home and develop their village. I'm the chief of Bamingi, I'm the chief of Bikon. I am the chief of everyone here in our village. Anyone with a problem should come to me before going to another person. If it's more than me, then I will take it to my superior, the divisional officer. I will plead with those living with us in the village to live in peace with the indigents of Mombo. Bon career. I will talk for people who they don't come out for this for this war. Say they don't come for Mombo. They don't make peace. We must continue to get that. For say we continue for be in peace. Many are now hoping that with the chief on his traditional stool, peace will finally return to the village that was once deserted by its inhabitants due to the crisis in neighboring villages of the southwest region. 
In the northwest region of Cameroon, our correspondent Bustela reports that farmers are among those, uh, some of the citizens who have been badly affected by the Anglophone crisis, they have been unable to go on with their farm work because of insecurity uh, provoked by gun battles between separatist fighters and pro, or rather pro independence fighters and elements of the national armed forces and this has brought on two sufferings to some of the families who depended on the uh, farm activities and the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development was in the Northwest region to encourage the farmers. It was in this report. Mustela. This agri show is supposed to bring together farmers from the seven divisions that make up the Northwest region to exhibit their produce and network for better productivity. This year, observers say the turnout has been timid with low-quality produce on display. This as a result of the four years running arm conflict, a conflict which has led to the displacement of many farmers and their farms. Among the displaced farms is the Institute of Agricultural Research for Development, Bambui. For about two to three years, Iraq Bambui was vandalized during this socio-political crisis. When you go around, you see most of the farmers' products are low quality, low yielding, and small sizes. This 2020 agri show in Bamenda saw the visit of the Minister of Livestock, Fisheries, and Animal Industry. Dr. Tiger was presented to strides being made to ensure food security within and without the Northwest region as he went through the various stands. So we have our fish research station at Kumba, and we have our potato research laboratory. We have brought it back up to the So as I was explaining the other day, the potato that is in the farmer's field now is about the seed generation. The production has reduced a lot. And so now we are renewing the material, the material for potato now in oxidation. And we hope that these two regions will start to have good seeds, and fresh generation, high yielding and resistant yielding. So farmers can come all around and do that. During his working visit to Bamenda, the Minepia boss also inaugurated a hatchery and this building to host the services of the Northwest Livestock Development Fund. Bustela reporting there from Bamenda over to Limbe in the southwest region of the country. Our correspondent Davidson Maimo takes a look at the state of roads ahead of the 2021 African Nations Championship. His report. It is Roch A in the seaside resort city of Limbe. Total traffic congestion in some areas. Within some neighborhood, the people have to deal with the dusty nature of the road, especially those living by the roadside. The type of road we have in Limbe for an city, city is not actually the type of road we want. We don't even have the parking space, poor drainage system in the road. Rehabilitation and the construction of pedestrian paths on some major streets ahead of the African Championship Tournament. Cameroonians in Limbe say the work is moving on a snail pace. Really slow. It's taking us it's up down. It's not going. It's more than 21 days. I'm going back to now. They are not uh, computer job. Some city dwellers opined that portion of the major street is still narrow with so many potholes yet to be maintained. Uh, there are so many potholes, the roads are not actually accurate. Expand the roads, they have no allowance of the roads. The roads are still narrow, and where, would they, where are we going to arrange the road when the stand is, still start, is soon starting? Standard road is not there, and maintenance work to uh, be very poor, every part for Cameroon don't spoil. The populace of Limbe are of the opinion that roads within neighborhood should at least be graded to ease circulation in case of congestion on major streets. When the road, the road are too small, we will have congestion. Actually, we need more roads in Limbe. Only the access road to Rikame uh, Stadium will be jammed full. There will not be enough space for to go there. We need the road from the water to be car. Nonetheless, the Minister of Urban Development and Housing has done enormous work rehabilitating some roads. The construction of the Seca Junction stretch of road to Mao neighborhood. The construction of the Bota Hospital comprehensive stretch of road passing through Limbe Cam. 
complementing government effort, the Limbe City Council is towering the Snake Junction Alpha Club towards stretch of road, which is more than 75% completed. They are doing all possible best in order to, to make sure the maintenance of the road is clear. Generally, the people of Limbe pray that contractors should execute all road projects before the start of Shan. The United Nations High Commission for Refugees in Cameroon is stepping up efforts to ensure that Central African refugees return to their home country and have a new life. So to speak, the officials here in the country's economy come to Dwala, facilitating the return of the Central African refugees who are in their thousands in Cameroon. Sixteen of them, six from Yaoundé and ten from Dwala, left the country today through the Dwala International Airport and they are returning home after several years in the Cameroon. In total, this year, the United Nations High Commission for Refugees has sent back home 2,028 Central African uh, refugees, and since 2019, 5,498 of them have been successfully uh, sent back home through uh, the aid of the United Nations High Commission for uh, Refugees. And we talked to the head field officer of the United Nations High Commission for Refugees here in Douala. Take a listen. We have both refugees and, and asylum seekers. The total number of individuals are, is um, 15,000. But among them, we have more than 9,200 9, refugees and 5,000 asylum seekers. From January, we had more than 200 uh, intentions, return intentions. Voluntary repatriation is one of the durable solutions implemented by UNHCR for refugees. And those people are not selected. It's, very it's effectively a matter of voluntariness. So they call UN UNHCR and ask to return to their country. The only thing that we have to be sure is the security where they are going to. And we are in contact with our colleagues in Central, in Central Africa who give the go ahead so that we can be sure that where the persons are going, they will be totally secured. Uh, we, we had several um, departures during the last weeks. This is the third one. Last week we had two departures. Last week we had on the 9th, we have uh, 14 refugees who went back to Central Africa coming from Yaoundé. On the 11th, we had um, 16 refugees essentially from Douala who went back to Central Africa Republic. And today, yes, we have also uh, 16, uh, among them 10 from Douala and six coming from Yaoundé. And we also asked Mbemba Diallo Heat, field officer of the United Nations High Commission for Refugees in Douala, what the organization uh, does to help these refugees to safely return home and start a new life. This is what he told us. Small support and small allowance that we call in your, in your jargon, viatic. That is a small amount that we give them to help them for the just to install themselves when they will they will arrive but apart from that uh, viatic as they go back by flight we take by the flight ticket because they will they will go by hair we take in charge the flight ticket we take in charge the vaccination the vaccines that are requested to to go back and we also make sure that they uh, they, they pass the test for the covid 19 and we also give them a lot of advice on how they will have to behave when they will be there. We, we, we have this, uh, we, we try to reassure them that everything is put in place for a good resocialization in Central Africa. And we have our colleagues who are waiting for them as soon as they arrive at the airport of Bangui Poco because today and the last week uh, we were sending back Central Africans and our colleague they will host them and accompany them to the to the families and give them also a small allowance How for the resettlement. 
And so this is the International Day of Migration. And on this day, we are going to be taking a look at the fact that many young people, notably in African countries, including Cameroon, of course, continue undertaking the perilous journey through the desert and the sea for green pastures in Europe, America. Asia and many of them die in the course of the journey and many are still thinking that the best for them success good life is only out there and we are receiving a young politician the youngest counselor in Cameroon her name is Ba Akwen Nadie, member of the Cameroon Party for National Reconciliation. Thank you for joining us today. Good evening to all the televiewers of Equinox TV. Good evening to all um, the militants of the CPNR political movement. I want to send a special greetings to um, Dr. Baga. She's um, the coordinator of um, the CPNR movement in the U.S. Um, she and was you? here. She was here in Cameroon, and she's still there. We carried out an initiative of Table Ban, which was at the Mayo Sanaga, to be able to you know help the children there to facilitate education by giving them some school items. Right, and uh, we believe that it should help them to uh, be able to fend for themselves, to grow up, to be responsible citizens and to get a job to create a job and to stay home and not to escape like many young people are doing today actually because you know the rate of m m migration from cameroon to other countries like you know cameroon it's um it's um an underdeveloped country and you know many youths in cameroon the the, the they think that going out for greener pastures or you can only make it out of the country meanwhile in cameroon we have everything it takes we have our natural resources, we have our rich soils, we have um, our labor, which we are, we are, we are the human labor. We have all these things, but why is it that young people, like you and I, are escaping from their countries, and not only Cameroon, even other African countries, Nigeria and all the rest, even the African countries with uh, a stronger economic um, potentials, more than Cameroon, the citizens, the young people continue escaping to go out there. Some of them going through very uh, difficult uh, journey conditions, get to Europe, to Africa, to the United States, and Asia, and so on. I think that um, there is a problem of education. There is a problem of education from the base because, you know, when, when we grow up or when we are growing up, we always have the tendency of that when you're out of the country or when you are in these European countries, that's the best way you can make it. It also boils down to the fact that, you know, these guys who had the possibility of going out first, they come with like some kind of flimsy, shining things to, to, to you know, like, you know, make us be like, wow. Mm. But at the end of the day, that's Flashy not the truth. Uh, that's the truth. But at the end of the day, that's not the truth because, you know, these European countries are no longer the same. And the conditions that these guys undertake, like going to Libya and become slaves, and you know, we had some some cases of those girls who were in Libya and became sex slaves to others, to these um, Arab Arab um, um, people, the, Arab, the Arabs. So I think that there is a problem of education. We should start by educating our children at home as parents, teaching them on the the, the importance of you know being in your country, teaching them that Cameroon has much to offer, teaching them the, the ability of creating jobs for themselves because at the end of the day, we must not get involved all in the government. You must not work all in the government. Maybe some of the people, some of the young people uh, listening to you today should be able to learn from your example. You are a young person, you are a politician, you are engaged in politics, engaged in nation building, and uh, probably... Uh, you might have escaped like any other person to France, to the United States, to Lebanon, and so on. But you back home, what is that motivational factor, factor that keeps you home to work for your country? As I earlier said, I spoke of education and self-responsibility. When I talk of education, it means what you, you, you were supposed to accept or educate yourself that you can make it 
in your country. I am a young politician. I am. I left university. I have never worked in the government. I have such jobs. I have written concours. I wrote ENAM. I didn't pass. I wrote ENS. I had the, the, the entry, but I failed the orals. You know, these attributes discourages so many youth. And, you know, at the end of the day, they will tell you bring money for you to be able to get involved in. Bribe. Yeah, bribery and corruption. At the end of the day, they'll be able to tell you, bring money for you to enroll in this government work. But what, what, what is my push factor? It is the fact that I believe I can create job for myself. And there is also a problem of capital. You know, many youth, we do not have capital. We do not have who to give us capital. But I believe that if you believe in yourself, if you believe that whatever you touch can become successful, you can make it. I am young, I am dynamic, I am a young politician aspiring to be to, to take part because what one of the aspects that pushed me into politics is that the, the, the Cameroon population is predominated by youth. But at the end of the day, we find that youth are left out in decision making. That is why CPNR is a political party that is aimed at imp improving or aimed at teaching youth that you are supposed to take part in the decision making. That is why we are fighting so that the regime in place should be able to create condu conducive measures for youth to stay in their countries. They are supposed to create jobs. They are supposed to raise capitals for youth. They are supposed to, you know, give up possibility to for those who are out like in the diaspora they have means to come and invest to create jobs but the government will always have a way of frustrating these people who have the good heart to come and help youths to have jobs and all that so is it I, easy for you as a young politician to sail through because some of the young people will say but the world of politics for example is dominated by uh, the fa their fathers the grandfathers grandmothers and so on who uh, some of them say do not want to give up their seats for the young people. You know, Mr. Babela, the political sphere of Cameroon is it's really conducive, it's complicated. You are youth, you are dynamic, you want to make it, but those Goliaths will not want you. Goliaths. They always, yes, That's I call them serious. Goliaths because we can see what happened during the regional elections were left out. Meanwhile, democracy was supposed to be proved. And youths were supposed to be applauded. Because at the end of the day, all the decisions that these guys take, it greatly concerns the youth, like I am. So they should give way for us. That is why in the CPNR, we believe in our pertinence. What we say, we are trying to seduce the population to be able to come and dine with us so that we can fight the regime in place. Because the regime in place has killed the youth population. And this pushes them to go out. But I want to send a message by telling them that you must not make it out of the country. Because Cameroon has all it takes for you to make it. We have the rich soils. We have our labor, which is us, we have all it takes. But the only problem is the regime will not let us be. The regime will not provide conducive measures for the youths to stay home. All right, we're going to talk more about this later on in this edition of the 6 p.m. primetime newscast. But Akwen Nadi, politician, member of the Cameroon Party for National Reconciliation, thank you for coming. Thank you, Mr. Babila Jonathan. Coming up next, we're taking you up north to talk about the problem of inadequate electric energy supply. The Minister of Energy and Water Resources was recently there, and government is taking some measures to ensure that electricity is adequately supplied in order to uh, mitigate the impact of this problem on business activities and on homes. Details in this report by Mark Lefogwe. The Grand North has been a dark for several months due to persistent power cuts witnessed in the area, paralyzing economic activities. The Minister of Water and Energy, Gaston Elundwe Sumba, during his walking visit in the town of Garwa in the North region, blames the situation to the limited amount of water produced by the Lacto Dam. The main problem we are facing is the lack of water. Frequent power cuts in this area has nothing to do with the equipment. The dam produces 26 billion cubic meters of water. We are unable to distribute more than 600 million cubic meters of water daily. 
peut pas libérer plus de 6 millions de mètres cubes d'eau par In order to resolve the problem, the minister alongside other stakeholders carried out a series of measures that can reinforce the capacity of water produced by the dam. We are going to dismantle the entire system and connect it to that of Yaoundé. Work has already begun in Gaoundé and Galwa. We have started installing the necessary equipment. We are hoping that during the first week of January, lights will be back. The population are anxiously hoping that electricity can be re-established so they can go along with their day-to-day -day activities, especially during this end-of-year period. Talking point is up next. Our second guest in this edition of the 6 p.m. News Council on Ekinos Television is an educationist and entrepreneur. Dr. Nick William, thank you for joining us today. Uh, thank you, Jonathan. It's, it's nice to be with you again. The big question we are looking at is how to uh, solve this problem of uh, young people who are continuously undertaking this perilous journey through the sea, through the desert, and some of them die in the process of seeking greener pastures in Europe, in America, in Asia, and so on. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, if we have to solve that problem, we must be very frank to ourselves. You see, if um, look at look at a city like Yaoundé, it's a beautiful city in quotes, and uh, everybody is there, the poor, the rich, and whatever. But let's just suppose for one minute that there is no water in Yaoundé at all, and there's no way water can come to Yaoundé, and you cannot, you cannot, if the boreholes are all dry and there's no water, Everybody is going to leave Yaoundé, including the diplomats and the president, and they will migrate. That's what will happen. So if children are leaving your country, your house, and are running out, out, then you had better ask the right question, what is it in my house that is making my kids uncomfortable? And you solve the problem. You don't blame the children all the time. I listened to Madame uh, talking a moment ago. Yeah, the, the kids should be educated, educated, educated about what? The, it is about the education. You should give them an education that gives them the capacity to be able to create wealth and opportunities for themselves. You can, you can lecture the whole morning to them that is, you, they have to be patriotic. Patriotism is great, but you, know, you cannot tell someone who is hungry that they should be patriotic and they would be. So what exactly am I talking about? If you look at the Maslow's hierarchy of needs and try to find out what are the needs of people, why do you know, those of you who know the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you have five levels, and out of that, that five levels, you have the sixth one, which is the transcendental phase. So we start at the bottom of the, of, of, of the, of the triangle or the pyramid down here. You have the need for food, for water, for sleep, for air. And, uh, and then, then if you go to the second level, you have the need for safety and security. Shelter is there. You go to the third level, that's the level for, for love. You, you, you need to love and give love. This, this fourth level is ego, that's, that's self-pride, and the fifth level is self-actualization. Now, if children, they might, they might do their best, they will go to university or go to what schools or do whatever they want, and they cannot eat. They cannot, they cannot, but, but Dr. Nick, yeah. if they cannot eat, they cannot solve their basic problems and, be, and, and feel that they are contributing, they will leave. But Dr. Nick, we have heard about divisional officers a divisional officer who decides to abandon his job as a divisional officer and then moves over to the United States and start doing some kind of menial jobs. He wasn't hungry here anyway. So I'm thinking that there should be an issue around mindset. And, and I think that's what uh, uh, Nadia was, no, no, was let's, talking No, no, let's, let's, let's look at the case. Let's, it, let's, let's teaching just, the people to understand that you can make it here. Yes, there's no question you can make it here. But the, the groundwork must be such that you can make it. It's very important. It's true that people make it here, but you have to, you have to, you have to put in so much energy, and uh, you have to sow a lot to be able to reap out something. And it's very, very unfortunate. The, the, the children should make it here, but we, the adults, should prepare the ground so that when the children are sowing, it can grow. 
It's very, very important. I must say that the ground is not fertile for kids. We must say also that the children have to be trained in the right way so that they can do something. But again, as the children are doing something, the groundwork must be, must, must, must be comfortable. I mean, you've heard of the bribery. You have the bribery request for sex, all sorts of funny things, and so on. So there's always a lot of en negative energy around, what, what, around the things that people are trying to do. Now, if we take the case of the SDO or the DO who has gone, now, you see, there are so many many job opportunities. There are so many kinds of jobs that can be done. But in Cameroon, they are so limited. We have this concours to do this or this one and these little little boxes. So the gentleman, you know, being a being a DO was not part of his of his psyche. He wanted to be something else, something better. But the system forced him to be a DO. And the question is, was he? Did he even go to school on based on merit or through bribery? Did he go in through the window like most of them do? So you go into something, but it's not you. It's not you. So he cannot express himself. It's not because you are paying him two hundred thousand francs a month that that is the life. No, it does no life. Doctor, what explains the fact that a young person will take? Two million francs here, for example. Some of them invest, actually invest a lot of money in the perilous journey through the desert, through the sea, paying uh, people along the way to, to see them through at different points and so on. Two million francs here, even one million, and try, instead of investing it here, he decides to invest it in a perilous journey in which he's not sure that he will even get to his destination. When you say invest it here, the question you want to ask is invest in what? And use what, uh, what uh, capacities that you've given the child. What you're saying is right, but I'm just, I'm just kind of like twisting, it, uh, twisting things around so we can understand why those children are doing those things. It's true, like Madame was saying, that you know, people who are out there paint a very a glorious picture of what is going on there. So everybody is like, let me go out there. It, it's an El Dorado out there. It's not an El Dorado. But the question again is, let's look at what, what children are doing here, especially when we look at the Bamletic children and so on. They're buying and selling stuff and so on and so forth. But but those of them who are doing very well, they have poultry farms and doing, doing some things and so on. But if you look, look at it again very closely and we are honest to ourselves, the, not everybody can, 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 can buy and be selling stuff. Buying and selling stuff is not it. How do we produce wealth? How do we train our children so that they produce wealth, so that they are productive? So the bottom line at the end of the day, if many of them are going out, it is the school system that has failed. It's, it lacks technology, it lacks, it lacks engineering, it lacks capacity, and it lacks just about so many things. And if we don't change that school system, they will continue to go out. Amen. You can give, you, let me put it another way. You can actually give to all the youths in Cameroon, give them 10 million francs each. That is not the solution. The solution is not giving the money. No, it's, it's not the money. It's the capacity first, then preparing the groundwork and putting them up in companies and so on, and helping them to make things happen. But you know, the system doesn't help people to make it. The system doesn't help people. What can be done so that the system can help people? Take can for help instance, the young people to be able to make use of the resources that they have here yeah. to obtain what they desire, what they are looking for out there. See. Let's just take agriculture. We can go into agriculture and do what is right, and we'll create two million jobs for youth in, in every, every two years. You see, in 19, I think it was 19, 2013, or I can't remember when, the president put at the disposal of youth for some special youth program 121 billion francs. You know, I was discussing this topic with Mr. Weinpolnga on CRTV, and I was saying if I had the opportunity to advise anybody what you should do with the 121 billion francs, you know, I would have said, take that money, you know, go to the Caterpillar company in Canada or, or in China or America, just buy a lot of heavy equipment. Come and, and share this heavy equipment to all these, the subdivisions in the nation, and then gather young people around this equipment and train them on how to use the equipment, train them how to use the equipment to open up farms, train them how to use the equipment to, 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 to do the farm, to, to, to do the, 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 the hard labor, train them how to use the equipment to do the, 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 the earth roads and so on. And when they have gotten more skills, we can even buy tire from Saudi Arabia. They will be doing our roads. The roads might be bad, but they must start somewhere. So we have to invest in youth like that so that you have lots of youths doing things and generating wealth for themselves and feeling happy about it. But the way we do it, God alone knows. Mm. What about the issue of training in universities and other higher institutions of learning and the, the gap between that, what happens in the schools and the labor market? I was just reading, while waiting to come on stage, I was just reading something on WhatsApp now with my friends, 
and you see that you will see someone who graduates with a first degree in the English language who cannot write a CV. Who, who would want to go to someone else to write uh, an application for them? And besides, writing applications and CVs is not the thing. You know, someone was complaining. We have, we've, we have might be about 500,000 uh, um, youths in our universities and higher institutes. The, the, the public service in Cameroon employs about 300,000 people, and it is already over flooded. It's not, it, there's no room for take one, two, three, or four anymore. But yet, the private sector has been under, on, 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 under exploited, and it is the private sector that can employ millions and millions of youths, and but that private sector is not well developed. And we have given the, we've given our youth the mindset that if you are not a civil servant and you are blowing hot air and throwing your weight around, you are a nobody. You know, a, a funny mindset. You must be. You must be somebody. You must be standing, you, 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 people must stand at attention when you're passing by so that you feel good. All of that is bullshit. So we need to develop that private sector and get our children to fit into that private sector. Like I was saying on another TV channel, go to China, buy, buy cottage industries and bring for them so that they use it to transform most of the things we are doing. I mean, they shouldn't be doing, like when we say children should go to the farm, to, you, I, know, I don't expect them to go there with a, with a, with a, with a cutlass and, and, and an axe or a hoe or something like that. That's primitive. They need to to be using equipment and doing things in a big way. So it is about engineering and technology and doing what it takes, give those children the capacities, help them to create companies, and help them in the best way you can to have this entrepreneurial mindset, and it will be OK. Dr. Nick Nguyen, educationist, entrepreneur, thank you for joining us today. It's my pleasure. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for staying with us. Equinox Wise up next. <laughs>